You've seen Elf on a Shelf, now get ready for John Wick on my d Welcome to Indonesia. We've been sent here to eliminate militia commander Noel Crest and a pirate who goes by the name of Akka. These two were most likely involved with the murder of John's dog, so today they die. I'll be bringing in with me some coins, fiber wire and a silenced pistol. I notice a man fishing and so I walk up behind him and kick him into the water and he immediately drowns. Who lives on a tropical island and doesn't get swimming lessons? What a silly goose. I leave the beach and make my way into the jungle. As I emerge, I find a small town where the locals are hosting a slap contest. I also notice my target Akka watching from above, but obviously the slap contest takes priority over the mission. These Malakas aren't holding back either. It's not like dinner was burnt, so why the aggression? The crowd loves it too. This guy in the red shirt thoroughly enjoys watching men get slapped and also substance abuse. I step up and enter the contest and begin dropping my opponents. I'm John Wick, of course I'm going to be great at slapping. I slap down every pirate and militia in the vicinity. Even red shirt guy bravely steps up and wants a taste of my sweaty palms. I beat him down like he was the worst performing member of my stable horse. My other target Noel arrives as he's heard about John's heroics and he says he'd like to have a private word with me. I follow him into some shipping containers which are extremely dark. Wouldn't be a bad idea to string up some Christmas lights or something. Maybe those glow in the dark moon and star stickers. He's so impressed with my slapping that he offers me a job and I say I'll think about it. I love that he's inviting me into his inner circle because I slap hard. That is how you hire staff. We'll deal with him soon. I head back to the bar and the owner asks if I can help her find some coconuts. John Wick Chapter 5 Coconut Justice I pick up an apple from one of the tables and I throw it at her feet. She immediately recognizes that it isn't a coconut. Lass knows her fruits. I begin my search, starting at the supplies room. I find a durian and I throw it at the kitchen hand's head. There's a small chance that this kitchen hand prepared food for those who killed John's dog. I hide his unconscious body in the freezer where he'll likely never be found and will freeze to death. I search the island and eventually locate a coconut. She's happy with my effort and then immediately asks if I'll help her find some exotic cigars that got stolen. She then begins to day drink which is very unprofessional. I head out to find the cigars and I guess I work unpaid for a bar now. Cheap overseas labor is amazing until you become the cheap overseas labor. Like the video if you now have a greater appreciation of cheap overseas labor. I head into the village and begin my investigation. I climb in a random window and these two guys accuse me of break and entering. In my defense it was wide open, they should really get a sturdy security screen from Crim Safe. I continue with the exact same strategy and it actually works out. I find a note from the cigar thief. It says that he buried the cigars and fled the island. Given I can't kill him, I lure his mother or maybe sugar mama inside. Age is just a number and smack her in the face with a shovel. I then accidentally slam the door on her head and run away. The search for the buried cigars was huge but I learned a lot about the island. Like Indonesian people get clinical depression, just like us. I also don't understand why people get so mad about oil drilling, you can barely notice them out there. Uh, hello sir, have a lovely day. What the hell is I find the cigars and dig them up. I head back to the bar and the lass is like, thanks mate, now can you save a hostage that the militia group have captured? It just seems like an escalation, you know? One minute it's fresh coconuts and now I'm infiltrating a militia base. I fall right into the sunk cost fallacy and prepare to save a hostage. Apparently he's being held at some ruins, but first I clear my head with a little fishing. There's something kind of wholesome about watching a suited up John Wick fish in an Indonesian village. I grab a fire torch from this barrel and head into the sea cave. This man can turn a pencil into a lethal weapon but can't hold up a torch properly. As I head deeper into the cave, I see there's a strong military presence and then I get caught by a hidden camera. This is the same way they got me when I used to steal chocolate bars as a kid. They send a squad out to hunt me, but fortunately I find a treasure chest in a cave and it has a pirate outfit in it. A guard runs up on me but gets distracted by the swashbuckler drip and I throw a staff at his head. I drag his body into the cave and ensure there are no loose ends. Crisis averted. I finally find the man we're looking for. Not the hostage, but this Chad demonstrating the versatility of a good pair of sandals. Not only are they a breathable footwear choice, but they're suitable for any terrain. I need to see what's being protected by these pirates. They won't let me in because I'm more of a vintage pirate than a modern pirate. I know they're not the most ethical group, but not allowing me into their fortress because of the color of my hat is uncool. I run around the back and just climb up these ruins. There's two guards blocking my way and no clear route to move past them. I then remember I'm John Wick and have a gun, so I proceed to eliminate them both. There's only one other pirate here and no sign of any militia or hostages, so this isn't the right ruins. Pesky Indonesians and their multiple ancient ruins. As you know, I'm not a big fan of seagulls. They just offer very little to the world. Stealing chips and probably mildly annoying many innocent puppy dogs with their squawking. 
I begin unloading clip after clip in a brave attempt to cull as many of them as I can. I get a little carried away and realize I now only have one bullet. Not ideal. We are out here doing side quests for this bar owner. I head back to the dark scary cave that IO Interactive chose to officially call Marto's Mum's Nether Region. I use my last bullet to shoot the hidden camera and move into the darkness. There's two soldiers who conveniently have their backs turned chilling in the sleeping quarters. These beds don't look comfortable. I wouldn't be doing my guard job properly either if I was waking up in a damp cave with a sore back every morning. Someone spots the bodies almost immediately and so I pick up an automatic weapon and go loud. Poor John Wick thought he was going to get a job as a bartender, maybe make a few mojitos for the lads and now he's in deep freeing POWs for a covert pirate faction. I kill them all and hide the bodies extremely badly. I was never that good at hide and go seek. 14 years and I still haven't found Papa. I exit the cave and notice there's an unconscious witness somewhere. Quite unprofessional on my part. I find a makeshift militia kitchen and they've brought like 7 chefs with them cooking gourmet food. They've got their soldiers sleeping on the ground but they're feeding them salmon that melts in their mouth. Poor resource allocation. One of the chefs spots me running around and when he comes to investigate I strangle him and take his clothes. Meet Chef Wick, whose hair awkwardly comes through his little hat, just like in real life. No better way to blend in than by engaging in a little kitchen banter with my colleagues. I loosen the gas valve on the stove, and then one of the other workers goes to investigate. She proceeds to die in a fiery explosion as her face is burnt off, and we all share a cheap laugh as chefs love a bit of that red-hot dark humour. I wait for a guard to isolate himself, and then smack him with a frying pan as I'm really trying to embrace my kitchen-themed disguise. I take his clothes and at last I find what must surely be the correct ruins. It's time to save the hostage so I can get a job at the bar and clean beer glasses for pirates. While searching, I make a real connection with one of the NPCs. Make sure you're hydrating, man. He understands the value of God's sweet nectar. We lock eyes for a moment as we each acknowledge we are in the presence of water appreciating greatness. I head inside and kill the guy guarding the jail cells and hide his body. I take the cell key and open the jail door to find the hostage chained to the wall dead. Not ideal, but also not surprising, I took a long time to get here. I was even fishing for like 15 minutes to see if you could catch anything as a fun easter egg or something. A dead hostage not great, but silver lining, in the cell opposite him there was a lot of interesting weapons, even Molotov cocktails. Sometimes things just work out. I snap a photo of the big girl, even adding a tasteful late sunset filter to show that I'm creative and different. I head back to the cave, put my suit back on, and run back to the bar. I hand my new alcoholic friend the photograph, and she just says thanks. That's it. I killed about 20 people to get that photo, and she's not even going to give me a free drink or a cheeky restroom wristy. In her defense, I'm pretty sure that was her boyfriend, but it's time to move on and embrace being a 40-year-old single person. I follow her, and she walks straight to my other target, Akka. I eavesdrop, and Akka isn't happy that the militia have killed one of the pirate allies. She organizes a meeting with Noel Crest to discuss the issue. Both my targets meeting together, this is surprisingly good. I realize that I need to find a pirate disguise and fast. I burst into one of the cabins and there's a middle-aged couple watching a paused film. They must be like 14 cones deep. I fail to secure a disguise in time as Noel is respectably punctual. The two of them take off to the new meeting location and I do my best to follow along. They head to the first ruins that I visited. I run around so that I can attempt to climb the structure, but in a moment of calculated brilliance, Akka kicks Noelle off the edge because of the dead hostage and she kills the man. One target down, one to go. It's time to finish the job. As this is her village, I decide to have a look around and see if I can find a lead. I break into someone's house and there's a woman sleeping peacefully. John Wick Chapter 6, The Handsy Cuddle Monster. No, I just turn on her alarm so she wakes up and her sleep cycle gets ruined. I then decide to have another good fish. I don't know why, but just seeing Keanu Reeves fishing makes me happy. I spot this woman washing her clothes, but she hasn't separated whites and colors. Laundry day is the one time it's okay to be racist. I find a part of the pirate fortress that isn't guarded well, and I slip over the wall. One of the workers is awfully isolated, and so I stalk him down the pier. I found a starfish in the sea cave, and so I whip it out and throw it at his head like it was a ninja star. Imagine when his wife goes to the coroner's office to see the body and there's just this adorable little starfish lodged into his scalp. We've made it into the outer parameter of the fortress, which is a good start. There are guards everywhere, so I head into the staff bar. It's just two dudes drinking by themselves all sad in the dark. To be honest, this was my mate Marto and I like three nights ago. Oh my god, I'm a pirate. I turn off their generator to lure one outside. While he's busy fixing that, I strangle his friend and drag the body out of sight. 
The friend comes back and is wondering why there's an Uzi on the floor and so I shoot him in the head. We are now a modern day pirate. I swear to God, I've actually always looked up to pirates, especially Somali pirates. They just have this get up and go attitude. I don't know one Australian who's ever hijacked a freight ship and held the captain for ransom. I'm now able to walk right through the front gates. I've clearly been playing too many Ubisoft games as the first thing I feel compelled to do is climb to the top of this huge radio tower. I throw a screwdriver into the lookout's head and then an alert pops up saying that they're searching for me. I haven't exactly been a sneaky stepdad. This island is literally littered with corpses, so we best get a move on. I head into one of the warehouses where they're keeping the prisoners. Pretty good cell, to be honest. There's a mattress for naps, although they have also wired the cell up to electrocute inmates, which is a humanitarian issue. One of the captives asks if I can help him escape, and I agree. John Wick isn't just a bloodthirsty killer, his actions have meaning. I find the cell key in the pirate's office, and I break the big man out of his cell so that he can be free. The guy with the hood whose hands are tied behind his back will just immediately be recaptured, I guess. He moves through the compound like an inspirational ninja and then lightly jogs towards the beach. If there was ever a time to sprint, it would be now. I was quite interested to see how he'd escape, and he just gets in the water and begins a gentle breaststroke towards a second chance at life. You always give them a taste of freedom before you end everything. Now it's time to eliminate Akka. I head back to the cells and she's pretty upset about the great escape. I quickly turn on the electric setup, which causes confusion. Before anyone realizes what's going on, I activate the sprinkler system and electrify Akka like she was a shrimp on the barbie. Obviously this doesn't go down too well with her pirate friends, and so I whip out my handgun and take them all down. Both targets eliminated, it's time to escape. I lose my pursuers by sneaking down a truly stunning beach pathway. Unfortunately, no one in the village is aware of what just went down, or maybe they're just too invested in the slap contest to care. I whip a lit Molotov cocktail out of my pocket and I hurl it right at the competitors. I already fairly won that competition, so you can imagine my disgust seeing them carry on. They should have done the politically correct thing and killed themselves out of shame. Lucky not to be gunned down, I hide in a closet for ages while they search. When the coast is clear, I make a run for it, but I really did gamble here as bullets fly in from most directions. Unfortunately, a bit of that John Wick plot armor must have rubbed off on me and I managed to get a boat and escape the island without a second to spare. Mission complete. Zero out of five stars, which is to be expected as I murdered a lot of supposedly innocent people. Last week's GTA Vice City Stories video got wrongly age restricted, so you might not have seen it. It's now all good and ready to watch. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. Shout out to Aix's mum. You're a beautiful and strong woman. I love you and goodbye.